What is going on guys, my name is Zora, and welcome back to Steins Gate Elite. A visual novel that I've been waiting months for, and it's super exciting because I love Steins Gate, and... Oh, Michael and One Fime and Jared will not be joining me for this one. They might join me for more episodes in the future, but I just wanted them to come along for the first episode. And I'll probably have them coming along for more special episodes. But anyway, guys, let's jump into it. <laughs> hey, you. Can you see us? Why won't you answer? I'm asking you a question. Yes, you. On the other side of the monitor. <laughs> Your silence only strengthens my hypothesis. I suppose that, from your perspective, it appears that we are the ones inside the monitor. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. For it is you who are inside. Your reality is nothing but lies and shadows. Naturally, that includes you, too. Can I just say they... Like, I had my doubts about, you know, the visual novel and the anime style, but they've managed to surprise me because it's a... Ooh, true reality is on this side of the screen. <laughs> don't believe me? I don't blame you. Few are those who can handle the truth. But no matter, I shall speak in simpler terms. Easy enough for even you to understand. This is the Future Gadget Laboratory. Located in the Akihabara district of Tokyo, we call it simply the lab. Our purpose is to shatter the system and plunge the world into chaos. Really? You shouldn't do bad things, Okarine. Quiet, I'm a mad scientist, remember? From the station, head down Chuodori until you reach Sahirocho Station. Probably I'm going to butcher all of these words. Then take a left onto Kuramaibashi Dori in the alley before the traffic light. You'll find the run-down Ahiyama building. The lab is on the second floor. On the first floor is a store of ill repute called the Braun Tube Workshop. You can't miss it. It deals exclusively in CRT monitors, of all things. Can you imagine, even in the heart of Akihabara's electric town, the, dem the demand for CRTs is practically non-existent? But the proprietor of the Braun Tube Workshop, Tenoji, is also the owner of the building. That's how he can afford to maintain his ridiculously niche hobby shop, even as the land value continues to rise. He may seem a rough sort, but he was no match for my charisma. Now the entire second floor is mine for next to nothing. <laughs> I digress. The future gadget laboratory is currently experiencing a severe shortage of manpower. We welcome dedicated scientists from all fields to apply. At present, our researchers are... Ocarine, Ocarine, you've got to say lab mems, not researchers. Our lab mems, laboratory members are three. I am the founder of the Future Gadget Laboratory. Lab member number 001, the insane mad scientist, Yoyuin Kyoma! Yoyuin Kyoma! Okay. Ocarina is cuter, though. Next, we have our resident cosplayer and only female member, lab member number 002, Sheena Mayuri. Tuturu! Call me Mayushi! I like making costumes more than wearing them. And last, we have our resident super hacker, lab member number 003, Hashira Itaru. Stop calling me that, it's super hacker, duh. Here at the- <laughs> I do like how it kind of loops in certain places though. Here at the Future Gadget Laboratory, we devote ourselves to the art of invention. For details, see our lab's homepage. 
Our top priority, of course, is to develop weapons for the war with the Dark Dominion, but that research has spawned a number of offshoot inventions. In fact, that's all it's spawned. Our arsenal of future gadgets is up to eight, but this is just the beginning. I have a total of 108 inventions to create. But at minimum, you're gonna make at least, like, 204. Cap of pride. <laughs> Like, like in that tennis manga, right, I get it. No, it's the number of earthly desires and mortals, you at-channel junkie. And I thought I told you not to interrupt me when I'm talking. Yeah, wouldn't want to interrupt you talking to yourself. He's talking to me, Daru. Stop being super hacker. Because seeing how you take that as an insult... I'm not talking to myself, can't you see? I'm talking to the person behind the monitor. Oh, he just grinned! What are you grinning about, damn you? You don't even exist outside that monitor! Just say don't look at me. I don't think that's gonna work. It appears our attempts to communicate have failed. It's sad to see someone so deeply in denial of reality. Maybe they think we're in the s we're in the game. I doubt it's even occurred to them. But aren't your 2D girlfriends the same way? You know what? Another th another thing about Steins Gate that I like is it's super meta because it brings up how because this is I think. Maybe not everyone, but a majority of people do have that thought at least once in their life, where they're like, what if we're the ones behind the monitor? Like, what What if we're the ones being watched? That is, fun that is a very interesting thing to think about. I find it to be interesting at least. But whatever. Again, Steins Gate is clearly pandering towards me. <laughs> That's different. Those girls are my... Or my wives. I thought that was Kyoma. <laughs> Nobody cares about your harem. But Mayushi touched upon a very interesting theme, you know? What if we're actually just characters in a game? Any way we can know for sure? Nope. Come on! Such questions are meaningless. Our time is better spent thinking of ways to destroy the system. <laughs> nice Chunibyo, bro. I step back from the monitor. Displayed on the screen is the ugly cute character, Alpaca Man. This is a game called Alpaca Man 2, where you speak to Alpaca Man via microphone and watch him react. So hey you Pikachu 2, but with an alpaca that also has the face of a man. The game exploded in popularity when it was released 10 years ago, but personally, I find only the ugly part of ugly cute to be true. I bought it yesterday, 500 yen used, headset included. I turned to Daru with a menacing glare. Shut it, hacker. I'm no Chunibyo pa <laughs> patient. I am Hyoin! Hyoin! Kyoma! Because I gotta say it exactly right, or Michael will be livid. <laughs> That's your character's name, right? Oh, Daru, your communication skills are beyond repair. I'll have you know I go to a ton of online, offline meets, and I'm always the life of the party. <laughs> Cause you get, yeah, getting the cops called. I'm saying he's a creep, and they call the cops because they don't know why he's there. I mean, if you get the cops called, you're clearly the life of the party. This fat, bespectacled guy is my brother-in-arms and right-hand man, Hashira Itaru, nickname Daru. Where does, does the D come? Whatever. He has 2D wives on whom he cheats with 3D maids. I don't agree with his preferences, but to him, anything's fine as long as it's Moe. He's the reliable and skilled partner who brings my ideas to fruition, despite his insistence that software is his forte. He shows remarkable aptitude with hardware as well. I mean, you, you kind of have to know how the hardware works to... For, 
I mean, you don't exactly need to know how the hardware works to do the software. I'm, it's probably better if you do have a kind of idea of how the hardware works first before. Oh, the needle bit my finger. This ditzy girl is in charge of the lab's official costume division for women. And today she's working on costumes at her usual leisurely pace. Unfortunately, I have no idea if the costumes are well made or not because I don't know what the characters are supposed to look like Why does the future gadget laboratory need costumes for women? It doesn't The truth is that my Yuri is completely useless uh, I'm mean, she uh, more like a mascot, you know <laughs> cuz she is adorable Okay, still, there's no way I would ever kick her out. After all, she was the first one to join the future gadget laboratory. I still remember the day Mayuri first came to the lab. It was spring, she said to me. Mayushi is Okarin's hostage. I belong here. To me, her offer was my salvation. So, did Alpaca Man say anything? Nope, nothing. The human-faced alpaca inside the monitor was completely unresponsive. So unresponsive, you'd think the game was bugged. Damn, antisocial alpaca. Antisocial. Hmm? The TV makes a sound like it shorted, and then the screen goes blank. I changed the channel. Nothing. Check the power cable. Nothing. Whack it again. Nothing. I guess it's broken. Damn. This crummy TV is on lease from the brawn tube workshop downstairs. It's probably just old. You made Mr. Alpaca angry. <laughs> My Yuri's just smiling like, <laughs> Oh, Kareem, you idiot. Damn, I'll have to get it repaired later. I turn off the TV and look out the window. I can't stand the humidity of Japanese summers, blessed by a slight breeze blowing through my window. I gaze far out into the horizon. I close my eyes, and what naturally comes to mind is that impossible scene I saw an hour ago. Oh, and we're back to this. <laughs> okay. Um, they're gone. And it wasn't just the people on the street. The people in the shore, in the store, <laughs> shores, in the store is gone. And the restaurant's gone. Even the cars vanished. Drivers and all. And it all happened in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, an empty city spread before me. Again, this reminds me of that episode of Jimmy Neutron. Jimbo, Jimmy, where are you, son? <laughs> but just with the ominous, like, sounding back, like, nothingness behind the voice. Heat was rising from the asphalt and waves, but I felt only a cold chill down my spine. Then, wandering through the deserted Akiba, I saw a satellite smashed into the rooftop of the radio building. Because Michael prefers me to just say the radio building. I just stood there, breathless, until... Doo -doo -doo! What's wrong? <laughs> Mayuri's voice brought me back to reality. Mayuri hadn't disappeared. Everyone disappeared just now, right? Huh? You saw it too, right? Just now, before our very eyes. Did you see it? Mayuri, you saw it, right? I didn't see anything. You didn't? You saw nothing, nothing at all. There were people here a second ago, weren't there? There were? Even the store employees are gone. That's impossible by any measure. <coughs> of course they are. Her reply didn't make any sense. 
It was like this when we got here. Oh, I know, you're seeing things, aren't you? Oak Reen is just a tad bit insane. I'm drinking my Dr. Pepper, hashtag not sponsored, but I wish I was. Playing Steins Gate Elite while drinking Dr. Pepper in the video, got, if the video got sponsored by Dr. Pepper, that would be some amazing shit because the main character's favorite drink is Dr. Pepper. But, um, unfortunately, that's not the case. <sighs> I'm sure it's because of the heat. Doo -doo -doo. How could you laugh at a time like this? I always thought she was a bit strange, but maybe her brain is actually broken. Or maybe yours is Ocarine. I realized that she couldn't help me. With nowhere else to turn, I looked up at the bright blue sky. Naturally, my eyes drifted to the top of the radio building, where I had been just a moment before. There it was, an enormous machine, like some kind of satellite, embedded in the roof of the building. The same building where just moments before I had found Makase Kurisu's body in a pool of blood. What happened to her? That's just, it's just jelly, right? She's not to just, you know, just stand her up and, you know, just brush her off and she's gonna, she's gonna, uh, has anybody called an ambulance? Just before everyone disappeared, I could have sworn I heard an ambulance siren. I could say curse you still, might still be in that dark room, cold. Bloody and alone. You know, Okarine, you sound like you care for her. Or at least you will. The thought disturbed me, but the question at the f forefront of my mind was... But w what the hell is that satellite doing there? Satellite. Right before Dr. Nakabashi's presentation, the building was shaken by an unknown force. The roof door lock had been broken, and beyond it sat a large satellite-like machine. That's right, when I saw it, the object was neatly sitting on the rooftop. But that's not what I was seeing now. The satellite had penetrated the top floor of the building. It looked as if it had completely obliterated the room where Dr. Nakabashi's press conference had been held. It must have fallen out of orbit without burning up in the atmosphere, somehow. I knew it was crazy, but what other explanation could there be? The real question was... When did that happen? M m my Yuri... About that satellite... Yep, what a surprise, huh? What do you mean? What was a surprise? It made a huge... Kaplow! Sound. It certainly didn't make a sound, but I don't think it was Kaplow. Kachow! <laughs> That's the sound it made, clearly. <laughs> I'd say it was more like zoom. Like the roar of an earthquake. Did that satellite fall out of the sky? Did it? Do you think any aliens were on board? My Yuri is legit the cutest thing ever. I refuse to believe. I, if anyone who doesn't believe me or doesn't think so, I will fight you. I will actually fight you. Uh, oh my god. Uh, had I lost my mind? What I, had, what I had seen didn't match at all with what my Yuri was saying. Suddenly, nothing seemed real. Had I dreamt it all? Did ya? I caught the attention of a policeman trying to cordon off the scene and tried to tell him about the stabbing of Makase Kurisu, but... No one got stabbed at the radio building, he annoyedly insisted. Are you sure about that? Cause I'm pretty sure that bitch got stabbed. <laughs> what? How could he say that with such certainty? We were escorted up to UPX and released. UPX? FedEx. 
<laughs> you Upex. <laughs> Just put like, <laughs> Upex. <laughs> that sounds like an ad you'd find on certain websites. <laughs> there were people up at UPX like usual. And that brings us to the present. I'm baffled. Did the whole hour since the beginning of Nakabashi's presentation really happen? I check online for any news. <laughs> Google. The net is buzzing about the mysterious machine that crashed into the radio building. Nobody was mentioned, uh, no one has mentioned anything about the disappearance of hundreds of people from Akiba's streets, nor about Makase Kurisu's murder. It's all a mystery. A mystery. I see, so that's it. This is all an elaborate cover-up by the organization. Their influence has corrupted local law enforcement, which makes our, which means our entire government may already be under their control. My god. But they underestimated me, for I am not so easily played. One day I will expose their deeds and put an end to their reign. Having come to a satisfactory conclusion, I take a celebratory bottle of Dr. P, my favorite soda, from the fridge. Hell yeah! Ah! Dr. Pepper is best. Ah, uh, elix elixir intele intellectualus. Intellectualus. A drink fit for a genius. Cool is better. Ocarine really loves his Dr. P. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I would love to see? I would love to see Jack Septikai play this, and then him give Okabe the voice of uh, his papyrus voice, and then give Daru his sans voice. I, the great Hyoin Kyoma, <laughs> will capture the human child. <laughs> <laughs> then it's just Daru, like... <laughs> I don't know why I find that to be funny. That's not- it's not that funny, but it's funny, okay? I pity the man who knows not the greatness of this beverage. <laughs> Step through the curtain, div uh, dividing its center, and you'll enter the heart of the future gadget laboratory. A top secret development room restricted only to lab mems. Personally, I'm not fond of this cheap curtain. I often- Excuse me, the Dr. Pepper decided to f strike back. I often dream of replacing it with an airlock, but our research budget is already scraping the bottom of the barrel. Besides, what's in- uh, Jesus! Stop! Stop it, body! Stop! You're gross. Besides, what's important isn't money, it's ambition. All of the windows here are weather stripped with packing tape so it's dim and hot almost like a sauna. I've been wanting to buy an air conditioner for the lab, but there's no money for that. We're certainly accepting donations. Daru, is the plan progressing smoothly? Have you ever just like thought a joke in your head and you're like, that's funny, maybe I should say it aloud, and then you're like, nah. <laughs> Because that's what just happened. Uh, what plan? So, for the people asking what joke I was thinking of, d don't ask me how my mind went to this joke, because it legit makes no sense. It came out of legit nowhere. But just imagine, like, I was thinking, like, they're hot, and then I was thinking, I was, like, thinking, uh, maybe piss yourself like you do in water to get warm, but then I'm like, wait, that's the, why am I thinking that, that one, that wouldn't work? Uh, two, what? <laughs> How is that relevant to anything? Um, and the, not, that would, it was legit not relevant because it would achieve the exact opposite effect? I don't fuck. I sigh and turn his attention to the table in the middle of the room. Sitting majestically on top of the table is a commercial grade microwave oven. Why do I need a, why do I need a tip to tell me what a microwave is? Who doesn't know what a microwave is? You put your food on that plate, you hate the sh you- 
Well, on this one, you turn the knob and then hit start. But I guess in here, you gotta use your phone for the... Uh, whatever. Sitting majestically on top of the table is a commercial grade microwave oven. It's significantly larger than newer home models. No, you know what? Oh, uh, wait, what? How do I go to the pause menu? There we go. Here, let's here, let's, let's educate ourselves on what a microwave is. A cooking appliance which heats food by bombarding it with microwaves. Originally called the... That's a fucking weird name. Fuck this. I've... I've I don't... Whatever. The plan as in... <laughs> as in the plan, obviously. I'm talking about perfecting gadget number eight. Oh, that. How was I supposed to know what you meant? We've known each other for what? Three years now? We went to high school together, and now we're going to the same university. We share an inseparable bond. Like... <laughs> James Bond. Like prison cellmates. He's only been a lab member for two months, though. We were in different classes junior year, and actually we didn't talk at all, so two years? Details. The point is we've known each other a long time. I expect you to keep up with me here. Nope. Mm. Itch it. Man, all I wanted to do was have one of those cool cryptic conversations where all we talk about, <laughs> where we talk about plans and preparations and other important sounding stuff, but no one knows what it means except us. So, are we any closer to figuring out what's wrong with gadget number eight? Not yet. The Phone Wavenator! So far, the Future Gadget Laboratory has completed a total of eight inventions. As I explained to Alpaca Man, the lab's primary goal is to develop weapons for the war against the Dark Dominion, led by the organization that rules the world from the shadows. At present, we haven't completed any inventions of that sort. On the contrary, we haven't even figured out what we should make. Okay, okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. Maybe make video games. Believe it or not, that actually could work. I mean, having the youth on your side clearly works, right? But <laughs> but along the way, we have managed to create some ingenious future-ish gadgets as a byproduct of our research. <clears throat> it is a fundamental truth of science that great inventions are often created by accident. In other words, serendipity. So far, they total eight in number. Gadget number one, the bit particle gun. <clears throat> Gadget number two, the bamboo helicam. Gadget number three, could this be Aura Aura? Gadget number four, mode snake. Gadget number five, once again I've made a worthless object by Goemon. Gadget number four, oh, six, the Siloom saber. Gadget number seven, ghost in the ball. <clears throat> Is that supposed to be like ghost in the shell? Uh... Anyway, our current problem is future gadget number eight, the Phone Wave. Name subject should change. Phone Wave is a pretty weak name, so I've added name subject to change to the end until we come up with something better. For the record, it was my Yuri's idea, not mine. <laughs> I mean, the Phone Wave does. It, it sounds cool to me, okay? Jesus. Like, think about it. It's cool. But I digress. You see, it microwave, but you know, it's phone wave because it's, you know, uh, it, you use your phone to operate. <laughs> the phone wave, name subject to change, is in short, a remote controlled microwave. A few days ago, however, we discovered that the phone wave, name subject to change, has a second unintended capability. Our brave, or possibly just ditzy Mayuri, had made it her daily routine to heat some frozen fried chicken by remote control. Long story short, she uh, she was defrosting her beloved juicy chicken number one, as usual, when the unexpected happened. The chicken came out more frozen than when she'd put it in. The mic put it in. The <laughs> Can you say that again, just slowly? <laughs> <laughs> the microwave refroze the chicken. I don't know what's up with me today. I'm tired, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm putting y'all through this. Bear in mind, the frozen chicken had almost thawed by the time she placed it in the phone wave, name subject to change. 
but when she removed it, it was frozen solid. <clears throat> I mean, since then, Daru and I have been searching for the cause. We tried copying what Mayushi did, but we just can't reproduce the freezing phenomenon. And when we tried to freeze a banana, it turned out really weird. I just don't get it. Mayuri! Mayuri, bring forth the bananas! Are you gonna turn them into gel... Uh, gel... Gel banas again? Gel ba... Isn't it gel nanas? Jill Nanas again? That's been bugging me, Mayushi. Can you stop calling them Jill Banas? Oh. <laughs> but Jill Banas are Jill Banas. Whatever, get moving. Why do you have to use the whole bunch? It's a waste of food. I take the bananas from Mayuri and stick the whole bunch into the phone wave. Name subject to change. Your stinginess could cost us the battle with the organization. That's fine with me, Mayushi always buys the bananas, and now Mayushi can't eat a single one! Next time, we'll only do one banana. The phone wave, name subject to change, is simple to use. It's a microwave with a phone taped on. Wait, can I pull out my... Can you pull out your phone in this one like you can in the- I- I haven't tried. <laughs> Look, the number is already in my address book. I just need to call the phone wave. No, it does it on its own. I waste no time. The call connects in an instant. Hello, this is the phone wave. Name subject to change. Just- just- just call it the no- the phone wave temp, okay? Just call it that. This is the voice of Mayushi Guidance, the system Daru program to operate the phone wave. Do you hear Mayushi's voice? Be quiet, I'm trying to listen. Can I just say it's weird when editing a video in a call with someone that you did the video with so you don't know who's talking? <laughs> so, uh, you can operate the timer from the menu. After pushing the hashtag button. <laughs> I don't regret calling it that. Please enter the heating time in seconds. For example, press hashtag 60 for one minute. Get it trending on Twitter. For two minutes, press hashtag 120. Hashtag 420 plays it. Hashtag 60. I skipped text because I was in the mood. Okay. Entertaining the command prop. Er, <laughs> okay. <sighs> slow, slow breathing. Entering the command properly will cause the phone wave name subject to change to function like a normal microwave. I'm about to just start skipping that Instead we're going to deliberately mess up the enter in enter 120 hashtag <laughs> Get it trending on Ritu uh, Twitter it would be Rit It would <laughs> I don't know That should do it this method was originally a simple mistake on my Yuri's part, but it somehow starts the freezing process. The phone wave, name subject to change, comes to life. Nice turntable, right? It's even spinning backwards. Backwards? That might have serious implications. If we look at quantum critical behavior driven by Hun's rule... Yeah, no. Not Hun's rule? Nope. Okay. When Okabe try- <laughs> When you try to sound smart to your smart friends, <laughs> the three of us wait and stare at the spinning bananas. After 120 seconds pass, the microwave chimes. Jill Nana's are ready! After Mayuri discovered that the phone wave had a freezing function, we attempted to freeze a bunch of bananas. This is what happened. It just gets more confusing each time. Daru, you wouldn't mind eating one of these, would you? Of course you wouldn't. It's for science! Your sacrifice will forever be remembered. They look really nasty. 
The taste doesn't matter. What matters is that you eat it. So come on, Daru. No need to be shy. Break a leg or a stomach and go for it. No way. Fine, Mayuri. The honor shall be yours. But gel nanas are all glop, or all gloopy, droopy, soft, and squishy. Wait, she already tried one? This girl's ditziness is truly on another level. It had no flavor and wasn't tasty at all. She is cute! <laughs> Gloopy droopy. Soft and squishy. Daru, what do you think? Soft and squishy bananas, huh? Soft and squishy banana. Mayushi, say your banana's all soft and squishy for me. <laughs> I, for, I, I know we've already done a few episodes of the original Steins Gate on this channel before I ended that series to wait for this game, but I still find the dialogue <laughs> to be funny. Okay, your banana's all soft and... Don't make her say that, you perv! Yeah, D Daru, I'll beat your butt! In any case, there's nothing we can do about it now. It's time for Daru and I to head to... I... I clicked out of the game. I j So can you pull out your phone in this? Or... No, this is not... So wait, how are you... Sp That's gonna be confusing later on. Because... <laughs> In any case, there's nothing we can do about it now. It's time for Daru and I to head to Daibiru. Daibiru. There's going to be a, s a seminar at ATF, and we have to be there. Tokyo Denki University, where Daru and I go to school, collaborates with ATF to set up satellite classes. Summer credits, basically. We have to attend the seminar and write a report. Come to think of it, what's today's seminar about again? I looked it up before the summer holiday began. I should have written it down. Behind me is the large unidentified object that crashed into a building near Akihabara Station. The building is under police barricade. No one is allowed to approach, but from a distance the object appears to be some kind of satellite. Oh. Oh. Oh! Oh, this is how you do it! It's from Mayuri. Um, responding to every last aspect of a message is a waste of time. I shall just pick one topic to respond to, or maybe I won't reply at all. Oh, so it actually notifies you when you get your text, like it shows up on the screen. Okay, um... I'm going to... Um, you know, I'm really sad about dropping my Oompa. It's worse than last year when I, uh, missed buying Fatty Gyro Froggy. Wait, dropped your Oompa? But d didn't that not happen in this world line? I'm confused! <laughs> I'm confused. I'm confused. Uh, okay. Um, reply? Reply? Um, which one do I want to reply to? Oopa or Gyro Froggy? Oopa, I feel your pain. That thing was worth a fortune. Our precious research funds. <laughs> uh, back up. Yeah, I wanna- I'm gonna do Gyro- That's the one from last year, right? I thought you weren't interested. There, that should do it. Mail sent. Man, fill that AC. I'm alive. I've, I, I don't. Unlike the lab, Diabiru has air conditioning, making it an oasis for <laughs> poorer students like us. Yet another reason for our diligent participation in the seminar. About the phone wave, name subject to change, I might have found our answer. You know that name subject to change thing is really annoying. I won't give it that- I won't give in that easily, even if no other lab members use name subject to change. I will carry on until the day we decide its true name. Let's call it the Okabe hates- hates me child. How about that? Because you hate your own child's name. Kinda of messed up, man. <laughs> now is not the time. 
So what's your latest uh, ridiculous theory? What do you mean ridiculous? My genius brain considers every possibility, even those a lesser mind wouldn't would say break the laws of nature. Don't you dare call that ridiculous. So basically, you're just pulling stuff out of your ass. You can't call that science. Are y'all gonna get in the elevator anytime soon? What is wrong? This elevator's taking its a fucking time. Shh, stop interrupting me. At this rate, I'll never get to my point. Daru, I have a hunch that the phone wave may be the key to opening Stein's gate. How's that? Her phone wave... Nasatuchi, maybe <laughs> just abbrevi abbreviate it. Uh, Steins, what? You lost me back at ridiculous, man. Let me share my revelations about the phone wave. Name sus. <laughs> How about, let's just call it sus. <laughs> Name subject should change. Damn you. My brilliant ideas will clearly find no purchase with Daru. Time to change the topic. So, you're telling me you have no interest in checking out Radikin? I won't get to see anything anyway, besides, the, uh, most of the info's out on the net already. There's more than a hundred threads on that channel. It's nuts, dude. But when I asked him if there's any information about Makase Kurisu on that channel... That again? What do you mean, again? I mean, you sent me that email like a week ago, right? I sent you an email? Don't be ridiculous. I saw her dead just three hours ago. You know, that message was kind of weird. It was dated a week after I got it, which means it came from the future. <laughs> I, I like how Daru's just fully accept. Time! <laughs> that, that's right, the email was sent from my phone. It was split into three mails. Okabe Rintaro, someone stab. Duh. <laughs> someone stab. And then, and, and then it's... <laughs> Someone stay, and then bed Makase. Okay, I want Makase in my bed, <laughs> in my right leg. High five. <laughs> bed Makase, curse you don't. This is the mail I sent you three hours ago. A chime signals our arrival on the fifth floor. The elevator doors open slowly. As we step out of the elevator, I see a girl, and I recognize her. You, you, impossible. Cue the outro music. <laughs> impossible, chills run down my spine. I can't move a finger. I stare at her face, her face in disbelief. Let's roll the end card. <laughs> Carrie here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more, check out our previous video here. Or if you'd like to support the channel, check out our Patreon here. There's also a video that was picked up by YouTube just for you. And lastly, you can click here to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Peace off!